Good morning! This morning we are reading Mocha chapter 4, beginning on page 25. So please follow along. Page 25. First thing the next morning, Charles and Becky buckled up in the back seat of the van. In front, Mom drove as Uncle Stephen in the passenger seat gave directions. Charles could tell that, just like Lizzie, Mom did not like her little brother telling her what to do. Take a left out of the driveway, Uncle Stephen said as they started out. I know the way to town, Stevie, Mom answered. I just don't know exactly where the vet's office is. Becky and Charles smiled at each other. Then Charles turned around in his seat so he could see Mocha and Buddy sharing the way back. The two had already become such good pals that Charles had begged Mom to let Buddy come along. Aunt Abigail had called the local vet and arranged a quick visit just so he could check Mocha for a microchip. If someone is missing this dog, they'll want to know where she is as soon as possible, she'd said. If there's no microchip, then there's probably no way we can find her owners. At least we'll know one way or the other. Now Charles reached back to pet Mocha. Poor little girl, had she ever had a real family? If we can't find your people, he promised her, we'll find you the very best home we can. Mocha thumped her tail and licked his hand, gazing up at him with her big brown eyes beneath that cute wrinkled brow. I'm not sure where I am, but I am sure of one thing, you're a friend. Up front, Mom made a disgusted sound as they drove past the big stone pillars that flanked the iron gate. We noticed that place yesterday. Who lives up there anyway, she asked. Some millionaire? I guess he must be, said Uncle Stephen. That's our newest neighbor. The guy who owns it is probably the richest guy in the county. He likes his privacy, that's for sure. Nobody around here has ever seen him, much less met him. He drives through town in a big black car with tinted windows. Becky leaned over to whisper to Charles. Once, she said, after I saw his car leave, I went right up to the gate. I was going to sneak around it and ride my bike up the driveway to see his house, but I couldn't. The whole property is fenced in. Plus, there are tons of signs everywhere about some alarm system. Charles raised his eyebrows. I guess he really doesn't want any surprise visitors. Becky shrugged. Maybe not, but I'm going back soon. There's an intercom on one of those pillars, and I'm going to push the button and see what happens. Maybe the gate will swing open automatically, she grinned at him. Are you in? Charles stared at her. I, I don't know, he said. She raised her eyebrows. Dare you, she said. Double dare. Um, Charles began. Turn right up here, said Uncle Stephen, and then take that left. See the red barn? That's where we're going. Charles leaned forward in his seat and stared out the window as if he were very, very interested in the view, hoping that Becky would not notice that he had not answered her dare. But Becky wasn't finished. I'm thinking he might be our mystery man from last night, she added. Don't you want to find out? Charles shrugged. Maybe, I guess. But what if there's a security camera? What if guards come out? What do we say if someone asks us what we're doing there? Now Becky shrugged. We'll think of something, she said, as Mom pulled up in front of the red barn. A sign on the door said, Elvis Strunk, small and large animal practice. A vet named Elvis? Mom asked, giggling. He's supposed to be a great guy, Uncle Stephen said. Let's go meet him. Charles liked the vet right away. He was a tall, gangly man with a warm smile. I'm Dr. Elvis, he said, shaking everyone's hand in turn. And this must be our last dog, he added as he helped Mocha up onto the high table in the center of a sparkling clean exam room. She wagged her tail as he looked her all over, running his hands along her body. Then she sat back on her haunches and put her paws up on Dr. Elvis' shoulders to give him a puppy hug. Another friend? Wonderful. Dr. Elvis laughed and hugged her back. You like to make friends, don't you? She gets along with everybody, said Charles. He, made, he had met a lot of sweet dogs, but Mocha might be the friendliest ever. He told the vet how Mocha had been found near the city running across a busy four-lane highway. Dr. Elvis finished the exam, checking her ears, eyes, and mouth. I'd say she's about six months old. She's skinny, but she looks healthy enough. No co collar probably means no home. But since she's so friendly, I bet she was able to find folks who gave her food. She may have been living on the streets in the city for quite a while. He picked up a device that looked like an oversized TV remote and waved it over Mocha's body. Then he shook his head. I'm not picking up a chip. Too bad. I can notify the police and put out the word to any vets I know. But if she was running by herself in such a big city, I doubt we'll be able to track down her owners, if she ever had any. Mom sighed. I think you're right, she said. After all, if she had a family, they might not even be from the city. She could have jumped out of any car or truck going down the highway. That highway. 
She sure is a fine looking dog though. Dr. Elvis stepped back to get another view. Great temperament too. She's very sweet. Judging by those big paws, she'll probably grow to be 90 to 100 pounds, maybe more. Wonder what her mix is. We were trying to figure that out, said Uncle Stephen. St. Bernard, maybe? There's an easy way to find out, said Dr. Elvis. I just got a DNA testing kit. We can take a blood sample and send it to a lab. They'll tell us exactly what breeds she is. You can do that, Charles asked. He had never heard of such a thing before. Dr. Elvis nodded. In fact, I'm offering it as a free special these days, just to see how it works. What do you say? Can we test Buddy too, Charles asked. Our puppy, I mean, he's in the car. Dr. Elvis looked surprised. Then he smiled. Sure, why not? And that's the end of chapter four. Hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. You know that God is good. God is good at being God. God is good to you. You can do hard things. Slay the game. Bye.